The Batman, directed by Matt Reeves, starring Robert Pattinson, Zoe Kravitz, Paul Dano, Jeffrey Wright, John Turturro, Peter Sarsgaard, Andy Serkis, and Colin Farrell as the Penguin, unrecognizable. I saw this movie last night at the 11 p.m. showing. It was a really good, but very long movie. I have a lot to say about this Batman movie. It's like completely different than anything we've ever gotten before. There's good and there's bad with this movie. It's kind of a weird mix. I will say this movie is three hours long and apparently there's a four hour long version out there. Director's cut will get at some point. I'll be watching that, but I will say this movie being three hours long, it didn't have to be three hours long. They could have kept every scene in this movie and just made them shorter. Like there's these really long shots where you just see Batman and he's there and he's sad and we're just on that frame for like two minutes longer than we really need to be. And I think if they just kind of like sped a lot of that up, we could have squeezed out 30 minutes without losing a single scene. So that's one of my major complaints. It's just too long unnecessarily, but I kind of get they're trying to do some sort of artistic thing with it. So with the bad part of the movie out of the way, let's talk about the rest of it. Let's start with Robert Pattinson as Batman. Now I know he's twinkly twilight guy, but if you've watched any of his other movies, you'll see he's actually a phenomenal actor and he's not that buff. Like Batman's supposed to be a big strong guy, but you know what? I mean, he's still, like sending people flying across the room in this movie, but you know, he's a skinny guy. He does do a pretty good Batman voice though. It's not over the top. It's not like, oh, very, very silly. You know, it's not like that. It's, he, it's very normal. You know, he's not like, he's just sounds like himself, maybe just a little bit deeper. And this Batman is a broken Batman. This guy is the most emo Batman I've ever seen. He even has the emo hair draping down his face. And like everyone's saying, this is a detective film. So this is Detective Batman. It's a big mystery with a big conclusion at the end. There are some great action scenes in here, but the movie does not really focus on the action that much, which is weird for a Batman movie. Also something that's a little bit different. This reminds me of like uh, the new James Bond. Well, I guess that's over now. The Daniel Craig James Bond. You know, James Bond, Daniel Craig's version doesn't have a lot of crazy gadgets. Batman does not have a whole lot of crazy gadgets comparatively to previous Batmans, much like Bond to previous Bonds. All these gadgets are a lot more practical. They seem very homemade. His suit looks like he made it himself. The Batmobile is just a badass muscle car with a rocket engine on the back. It's actually super sick. There's no Batcave either. They're like in a underground subway or something that the Waynes had. So it's all very different than anything we've seen before. It's not the same, which is refreshing. I really like that. It's a very, very grounded, like real life version. If a real person dressed up like a Batman, this is what they would be wearing. I just thought of another complaint about this movie. Very small, but Robert Pattinson's Batman gets shot with a lot of bullets and they just bing, 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 bing. They bounce off him. He has like the craziest body armor. Anyway, it's just a little pet peeve, a little nitpick of the movie. Zoe Kravitz is pretty good in this movie as Catwoman. I really liked her rendition of Catwoman. She has this like knitted, like she like knitted her own little Catwoman beanie and it's kind of cool. But I will say the best Catwoman is definitely Michelle Pfeiffer. Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer, Piper. I don't know how to say her name, but you know, from Batman Returns, Tim Burton's, that was, that's the best Catwoman. Yeah. Colin Farrell as the Penguin, unrecognizable, did such a good job. This guy seems like such a slob, like sleazy guy. And uh, God, he's actually so good. Paul Dano as the Riddler. That was pretty crazy. Now, Paul Dano's Riddler reminds me of his character they played in There Will Be blood he played like a preacher and like i feel like the, the acting and the character is exactly the same they're both insane out of their mind maybe matt reeves saw there would be blood and saw paul dano's preacher character and he's like that's my riddler right there i don't know but they're like the same guy everyone's already said this but the Riddler is basically the Zodiac killer, and that's who he was modeled after. He even looks like him. He's a serial killer. John Turturro. How do you say his name? Turro? Tur I'm so bad at saying names. I'm sorry. He plays a mob boss kind of guy, does such a good job. He's really creepy when he's around women, and I think that, you know, they really wanted to go for that because he is a creep in the movie. His lore in the movie goes deep. It's really great. Great acting from him. Andy Serkis plays Alfred. Great job at playing Alfred. However, he's like barely in the movie. I want more Alfred, bro. There wasn't a whole lot of Alfred and Bat Bruce Wayne, like, you know, lore in this. They were just kind of like brief partners in this film. And I just felt like that was a little bit underdone. But again, the movie's three hours long. 
Maybe they couldn't fit it in there. I forgot about Jeffrey Wright as Gordon. He was a great Gordon. Oh my God, I want more Jeffrey Wright as Gordon. That was a perfect casting. That guy's good in everything he's in anyways. Like, of course he was going to kill it. Side note, there's a lot of motorcycles in this film. Catwoman rides a motorcycle. Batman rides a motorcycle. I love motorcycles, and I just love that part of the film. There's a lot of motorcycles. This is easily one of the darkest Batman movies that have ever been made. With the exception of animated Batman films, those can get way darker than this, or even rated R. There's a lot of people dying in really dark ways. It doesn't show gore and stuff. It's a PG-13 film, but you could tell that these are very horrendous ways of people dying. One dude gets his face eaten off by rats. Now, I can't end the video without mentioning the music. The music in this film was so good, dude. Music was by a guy named Michael Giacchino. Giacano? I don't know his name. Oh, wow. This guy composed Up. That song was dope. He composed Ratatouille, Star Trek 2009, Rogue One Star Wars. It's like a whole new Batman song, but also sounds familiar to old Batmans. It really gives you this sense of just like despair and dread and corruption in a dirty dark city. Speaking of dark city, there's like one scene that's daytime in this film and then it just goes back to being dark the whole film. There is a couple like sunsets and sunrises. Batman just, you know, lives at night. So it kind of makes sense that the movie is just entirely at night. Anyways, that's all I could really say about this film without ruining it for anybody. So I'm going to stop here. Guys, definitely go see the Batman. I saw it IMAX in theaters. It's totally worth it. If you go to the late night one, make sure you take a nap because it is going to make you fall asleep if you don't have enough energy. Thank you very much for watching my review, guys. I figured I would bring these back maybe because I just wanted to try it. This channel's been growing so fast and I have not made a movie review since before my channel blew up. So let's see how it goes. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.